Cracking the code viewers, we have another important poll for you today concerning one of the most fundamental things that we all do with guitar picks, and that is hold them. Sometimes you just want to be held, especially if you're a guitar pick, and we want to find out all the ways that you and I all do this very important and fundamental activity. And it's funny that we even have to ask this, right? Picking up a guitar pick and preventing its inexorable fall towards the center of the earth is like the first thing we ever did with a guitar pick. It's the first thing you need to do if you want to play with one. But I think for a lot of us, this is a decision that happened so far back into the mists of history that we may no longer remember precisely what we did to arrive at our current pick grip and why, if anything, if, any, if there were any logic behind this choice or what reasons we may have had for making it, it just very quickly became part of our guitar playing DNA. And also, when I was learning, the, the frustrating aspect of this is that for a lot of us, if we're sort of self-taught or, or let's say more like self-directed, we're, we're consumers of, of teaching. We, back in the day, we bought books, cassettes, instructional material on uh, various kinds, videotapes, and you might get one piece of advice from, from one source and another piece of advice from another source. You have to hold the pick this way because it's the powerful way. I remember reading that elbow, it's, you know, use your elbow and grip it like this, it's very powerful. Or grip it like this, it's very delicate and you have lots of articulation. Or keep the fingers out so that you can, you can uh, gauge the depth of, of the pick attack with respect to the guitar. Or keep them in because you don't want those fingers flying around. There's, too much unsprung weight and all that momentum is being lost and it's not fast, right? This is the fastest way with the fingers rolled up. So many competing piece of, pieces of advice and I think what was even more confusing about that is that there was always a rationale provided, right? That these all, things all seemed reasonable, right? Yeah, I, I might want to touch the guitar body as a kind of, of loose anchor or I might want to keep the fingers in to go faster or I might want to use a fist style grip because it's very strong. That seems good if I'm playing like aggressive rhythm parts, sure. And there was never really any, uh, any sense of, of which one of these, or it was always hard to determine which one of these is like the right way. And of course in hindsight now, I think we, we're starting to get the sense that there are lots of right ways, that for every way that you can possibly hold a guitar pick, there's probably some elite player out there who, who does it that way and who plays mind-blowing stuff with that. So the question has become not so much of what's the right way, but who's doing what? What is the distribution of all of these ways? Some of these ways might be more popular than others. Some of these ways may be correlated with certain kinds of results. We may see that certain kinds of players use certain kinds of techniques. And this is all great, but we want to know. And rather than being prescriptive in the sense that we want to tell you, or we want this information because we want to tell you what the best way to do a thing is, or we want you to do it this way, it's more like in the cracking the code mindset is, find out what everyone is doing and explain why those things all have some merit in those various situations or for those various kind of sounds, right? So pick grip, incredibly fundamental aspect of your picking technique, a thing that we all do, a thing that we do for idiosyncratic reasons. Let's find out a little bit more about what each of us is doing. If you want to just skip the rest of this video and head over to the poll, it's really straightforward. Just head over to troygrady.com forward slash pick grip, P-I-C-K-G-R-I-P, and take the poll. You can pretty much just take a look at the questions. You'll figure it out. It's pretty straightforward. And of course, we're, we're going to take the results of this. We're going to put them up there so that everybody can see this. Um, now, what are the questions? What are the options here? Well, there are a lot of different ways to do this. Obviously, that's why we're doing this. In fact, the most complicated aspect of this kind of poll is all the different permutations or combinations of the different elements of the pick grip. And uh, one of the simplest that we can just kind of set aside right away is ironically, one of the weird ones, ironically used by some of the most famous players, right? The middle finger pick grip is like the Eddie Van Halen style and the Steve Moore style, to some extent, maybe the, um, the Albert Lee grip a little bit. And it, this is a somewhat less, I, my intuition is that this is a relatively uncommon method of holding the pick. And it's really, in, in a sense, it's also simpler, more straightforward, because there aren't too many different ways to do it. It's just the grip surface of the thumb, the fingerprint, the fingertip area of the thumb, and the fingertip area of the middle finger flat on, on each other, both gripping surfaces like this. And then the fingers, there really aren't too many options for those, right? They're either, they're mostly just kind of here. And so that's going to be one of the options on the poll, obviously. The other options are all permutations or variations on a basic theme, which is the thumb against the index finger in some fashion. And the main variable there seems to be 
how far up the side of the index finger the thumb travels. So if you start at the end of the index finger, for example, and you, you can do kind of the same fingertip to fingertip grip that we saw in the middle finger grip, but kind of like this, right? Flat and flat. Then the, the sort of corollary to that, or the inverse of that perhaps, or the counterpart, would be if you use the side of the index finger, but still with the gripping surface of the thumb, the fingertip of the thumb. So it'd be the, the tip of the thumb to the side of the index finger, and then there's, I would say, a third option, which is sort of in between, like on an angle. This happens to be the way that I do it. And, and I was thinking, well, would we want to have two options for this? Maybe most people kind of use this, this caddy corner diagonal method here, where it's not the flat face or the side, but it's kind of somewhere in between. That's fine. We'll put both three options. It makes sense that there's a lot of variability down here at the end of the index finger, because you have all these joints that come into play, and the, the flat fingertip surfaces of both digits are right next to one another here. So you have all these options. But then as we move up the index finger, right, we can move up towards the far knuckle, this one here, and we can do the side grip there. So it's the flat face of the thumb against the side of the index finger. And there don't really seem to be the different variations there with, this, with the, the underside or the side, because there really isn't a fingertip here to grip with. So it's mainly the side of the index finger. And then we can go up even further. We can go to the middle knuckle here. We can do the flat face of the thumb against the middle knuckle. And again, similar thing. This is pretty much the variation on that, the, the one main variation on that. There really aren't, I don't think, like an underside of an index finger grip. I don't know how you do that. But that means we've got, what is this? We've got three down here, four, five, five possibilities between the thumb and the index finger plus the middle finger grip, that makes six possibilities for gripping this. I think I'm getting most of them. These are the big ones anyway. I'm sure out there in the world is someone who does a ring finger or perhaps a pinky grip. But let's say these are kind of like the big five or the most common, what I surmise to be the most common five ways to hold this. But we have another vector. The fingers, the other fingers, what are they doing, right? They can be either out, they can be kind of loose, like more or less straight out like this. And a lot of times this functions as a depth gauge and you could sort of feel the guitar this grazing onto the body of the guitar thing. Ingve does this, I do this a lot. Then you have a loose curve of the fingers that more or less matches the index finger curvature. So if I'm holding the pick like this, then I can have the other fingers be more or less in the same shape as the index finger, which results in this kind of shape, a very loose curvature. And then we can have the completely tucked under loose fist idea. And that very often, I think correlates perhaps with these higher up the index finger grips, like on the side of the, the middle knuckle grip with the loose under fist thing. So the point here, again, is that we have these two variables and now we can correlate them. On the one hand, we can say which of the five pick holds, the specifically the holding portion of that, are most common and which are more common than others by, and by how much. And then we can say which of the finger situations are more common, either loose, curled, or fist. And then, of course, we can correlate. We can say which of these two are the most popular combinations, because you're going to be answering these questions one after another. And we can assimilate or connect that data in our results. We're going to take the results just like we did with the speed picking or the picking speed poll and chart them out on the website so that you can come back and take a look at this. This is very exciting stuff for us to do this. Things like pick grip, it's, it's funny, it's such an afterthought for a lot of us. And, and I even hesitate to say that because we all recognize how important this is. We all recognize that these are fundamental choices that we made at a very important point in our learning and that they have repercussions for the way that you touch the guitar, the anchoring points you have, the way, the types of picking movements that you choose. And yet, we don't really have a whole lot of data on how people actually do this. And, and the idea that in the past, you know, we had, we had recommend, as a teacher, you had to make a recommendation. You had to tell someone to do a thing. And it's important, right? You, you know, I'm not knocking teachers of yours. They did the best with the information they had. They helped us, guide us through this, this formative part of our, our technique. But th there was no way to get any better data on this. Maybe if you worked at a music school, you could do it. You could look at a uh, student body at Berkeley or something like that and take a poll there. But now, hell, we can ask the entire planet, right? We can beam this out using the power of the inner tubes and ask everybody who watches our channel, everybody on the internet, how do you do this? And we can start to build a bigger and more accurate picture of perhaps uh, ways uh, of understanding what is really happening out in the world and maybe start to, to see some patterns there, some frequency. So again, how do you take the poll? Head on over to troygrady.com forward slash pick grip, P-I-C-K-G-R-I.
uh, IP that I felt I might pick a grip. Take the picking grip poll. The results will update in semi real time, like every hour or something like that. We'll put them up there in the charts, and I'm very excited to see what this, what uh, what we can learn about the distribution of this very fundamental activity. And we need your help to be able to do it.